Listen to me real close. Take notes if you need to. Listen to me real close. Here's where we miss it, and we miss the part where God said, okay, now I want you to live for me. Here's the part where we miss it. Then we think, okay, I got saved. Then why do I still want to do the things? Like, why do I still want to drink? Why do I still want to uh, get on the Internet on pornography? Why do I want to uh, uh, run here? Why do I want to run? Why? And, 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 and so we think, well, just, that's just it. I, I, just, I just can't do it because I still want to do it. Listen to me. That's the flesh going on. And then sometimes when we get saved, we think, well, you know, I got saved. Why is the devil fighting me like this? God, if you're for me and you're not against me, but you're for me, Lord, why am I going through this? Because here's the part where we have missed it inside of God. Is that storms of life, they come and they go. Since the very uh, beginning of time, there's been these things called storms. And we think because we got saved that storms does not come to us or we're not affected by storms. But I need to tell you right now that, that when you're saved and there is no storms, you need to check your salvation. Let me say that again. I thought, I thought that'd be a pretty good phrase to say. Let me say that again. Because when you're saved and you don't have any storms, you need to check your salvation. There we go. All right. I was fixing to say, I might not be able to say that no more. Listen, because here's the thing. Storms are unavoidable and unpredictable. Look at your neighbor and say, unavoidable, unpredictable. There's a man by the name of Kenneth Copeland. He taught me this a long time ago. He said, you are either going into the storm in the middle of a storm or coming out of a storm and it's a cycle continuously there's listen you're either in a storm you're either going into one you're in the middle of one or you're coming out of one I'm going to preach to this side you're either going in the storm you're in the middle of a storm or you're coming out of a storm it's a cycle continuously look at your neighbor and say he's about to preach it's a continuous cycle Okay, but we are not to be afraid of the storms. We are not to dread the storms. And we are not to worry about the storms. We understand that when Christ abides in us and lives in us, that the storms are part of a purpose. Look at your neighbor and say purpose. Storms are a part of a purpose. You know, and when I say unpredictable, because we've always been there at times, you know, I mean, the weatherman come on and said, hey, I know there's not supposed to be no rain, but I don't know what happened. I used to tell Anna all the time, I said, that Doug Heady, he can't predict nothing. I mean, here we got all these million dollars of equipment up there, and he's looking at it. And I mean, this is just 12 hours in advance, and it wasn't supposed to rain. I was going to ride my bike, and it rained. But they're unpredictable. Sometimes they just pop up. Sometimes they just show up in our lives. And the thing about it is, it should not get us unbalanced or out of the way where God is. But sometimes, look at your neighbor and say, sometimes it does. We get to that place. Let's, let's turn, turn with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 4. Let's go to verse number 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. I got the handheld tonight because I'm going to do a little evangelistic work. Is that all right? Thank you, Chad, for your enthusiasm. Everybody else thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be a long one. Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. Look at your neighbor, the one you like the most in here. Just look at him and say, purpose. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, do you like them better than me? Starting to fight in church already. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4, verse number 35. If you got that, stand to your feet for the reading and the reverence of the Word of God, please. Listen, I, I'm so glad that we got technology here. But listen. 
If you write in your Bible, I want you to mark this because this will help you. Here's the thing about what carrying a Bible will do. Or maybe you got your smartphone. That's, that's fine. They got highlighters on them. But here's what happens is, you know, sometimes you're flipping through there and you're late hours at night and you're just, Lord, Lord, Lord. And you open up your Bible and, oh, Brother Brown preached on something. And you look down, Brother Brown preached on something six months ago. And all of a sudden it hits you now. That's, that's the thing about carrying your word. Now, technology is wonderful. But when you carry this with you, because, because here's the thing. If you got your Bibles, just hold it up. Shake it and make the devil mad. This is the only thing that makes him mad. You coming here tonight didn't make him mad. You giving that $1,000 check, I tried, didn't make him mad. But that word of God will make him mad. The Bible said he will run violently. He will flee when you begin to quote the word. When you begin to live by the word. When you begin to live and breathe. Because the Bible says that it is the bread of life. That's what this is to us. This is our daily bread. So as you begin to take this part. Here's what God said. Mark chapter 4 verse number 35. Are you there? And the same day. When the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with them other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now is the time.